Today, we're gonna to be talking about the new world of Switch Lite shells. We've talked about Joy-Cons being reshelled. We've talked about the regular Switch itself being reshelled. We've talked about the Pro Controller being reshelled. A lot of them to like the translucent shade. So for example, here is a Game Boy Color that's the Atomic Purple. A lot of us remember this from back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Remember we had those Nintendo 64s floating around where you could get a purple Nintendo 64 or a, or a green. They had orange, they had like a, a ghost black. It was a pretty popular thing at the time and I'm surprised Nintendo hasn't really done much with it, especially now with the Switch, which is really blown up. You figured they would kind of dip into some more crazier concepts, especially since they announced Coral and everyone freaks out and is gonna buy another Switch. I actually did two different reshells of two different Switch lights because I wanted to see what they would look like in person and kind of talk about the feel. Now, the first one that I know a lot of people want to know about is this one. This is the Atomic Purple Switch light. And I do have quite a few thoughts on this, specifically if it's something you should try, because I know right away seeing this, you might want to attempt to do it. And to be honest, it's unfortunately not the easiest thing to do. Now these shells do retail on Amazon for $35 and they are prime shipped. So when you do get your kit in, it comes in this turquoise box and opening it up, looking inside, it's pretty straightforward. You have a front shell and a back shell and those of course combined to kind of go around all the innards that you need to pull out of your current Switch light. It also comes with a set of like the rainbow Famicom or Super Famicom style buttons. Wasn't really particular on those, so I just put the standard white buttons back in. I think it provides a nice contrast without being a little too busy around the button area. And it also comes with new buttons for the top because you don't really want turquoise, yellow, or I guess you can get away with gray, but you don't definitely don't want turquoise or yellow buttons with your atomic purple casing. It also comes with a couple extra sleeves. Of course, you will need those to cover up where your SD card would go and then your game cartridge would go. It's to replace the, again, turquoise or yellow or gray ones that you have. And then you get to have some fun. You'll need a tri-tipped screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and get ready for this, a heat gun or a hair dryer. Hair dryer should work. And you might be wondering why? Well, to be honest, before you even attempt this, you're gonna have to pull this screen out from this shell, your stock shell. And that's not fun for a lot of people to do. Most people don't wanna pull at their screen, but we'll get to that in a minute. Of course, you flip it over, you'd start taking screws out of the back casing, that shell comes off of the back and you're greeted with a metal shield. Now, that metal shield is pretty easy to take off, couple of screws, but then you get past that part and it is a whole mess. I think there's a lot of intimidation looking at this part and it's gonna to be tough, but my best advice here is to take pictures immediately. By doing that, you'll be able to uh, really recall some of the stuff without having to go by memory. And you definitely wanna group your screws as well. If you want an easy suggestion to keep track of them, getting an ice cube tray should at least be able to kind of group them up by layer and that way you can keep everything together. The one good thing about the Switch Lite is it's very modular inside. So everything plugs in. The one exception is the charge port and that is really frustrating that that is not modular because that would make the charge port replacements a million times easier. We need to desolder and resolder it. And I, I don't get it, it's really annoying. But things like the headphone jack and your cartridge slot are all modular. That does make it a bit easier to move things over since you can take them out in pieces. All right, so you've pulled everything out and you're now staring at the frame itself. The Switch Lite does have a frame inside, much like the regular Switch, that way to provide some more uh, just durability overall so it's not easy to bend or anything. They basically put some structural piece inside just to hold it up. And when you start pulling that out, which there's just a few screws, you won't have to remove the battery, so you can leave that in there. You don't have to really remove the fan either, that can stay. But once you pick that up, you will see the screen and this is uh, interesting because I was trying to figure out, once I got to this piece and I pulled the screen out, how are they gonna get rid of the blue bezel on my turquoise switch light? Because 
are we gonna remove the screen from the digitizer? I figured not, considering uh, it would be a very weird thing to ask people to do to reshell their Switch. And unfortunately, the solution they went with, I'm not a massive fan of. I, I just, it feels like a tacked on solution and it actually might cause some issues if your front screen protector gets damaged. Anyway, in order to remove the screen, you heat the front with a heat gun. You specifically the front, don't heat the back screen. We're basically aiming to loosen the strip of glue all the way around. They're using 3M tape to hold the screen in place. And once it's heated up enough, you'll actually be able to push it out the front and you'll have your entire assembly right there, which the assembly being your screen and your digitizer. If you're curious what I'm talking about, I went ahead and pulled the screen off so I could show you. Your screen would be one piece. The digitizer on the front is your touch. So that can be replaced separately. However, it is really frustrating. One, to line everything back up, definitely. And two, to make sure no dust gets in there. To put your mind at ease a little bit, a lot of people are going to be terrified to touch the screen. However, the screens like the one in the Switch Lite are designed to fairly well to be able to endure some bending. Here's me bending it right now, just to make sure everyone watching is cringing currently. Yes, it can take some abuse. It's going to sound terrible as you rip it out of there because you'll hear cracking and all kinds of stuff as the plastic kind of bends around it in the frame. But as long as you're not too crazy with it, it should come free. Also, don't push directly on the back of the screen. Kind of do it around the edges as you need to. I would say as you start to kind of get the screen up on the front where you'll see the plastic bezel come off, get like a playing card under there. That's just an example, a business card, old credit card that will actually let you dislodge it and pull it free. Also, there is double-sided tape 3M holding the screen down. Let's say that tape comes off and you can't use it again. It just comes off and it gets bunched up. I noticed that kind of happened to me a little bit. And I thought about it and I said, well, this probably will happen to other people as well. So let's just go over the solution. This right here is fairly cheap cell phone tape. It's used for repairs on iPhones, Galaxy phones, anything where you have to attach a glass digitizer assembly down, this will go between it. This is fairly thin. I believe this is two millimeter, but I have a lot of this laying around after the old days of repairing cell phones. So I decided to try using it and yeah, it worked fine. You wanna peel any old tape off that's left. A little bit of heat should work fine doing that. Then after that, it's as straightforward as putting it back together. You wanna line the screen up and you wanna make sure it's in the correct way. You, <laughs> if you put it in the wrong way, you're gonna notice immediately as you start to put the motherboard in. So I would just make sure to check your pictures once again to make sure it is in the right orientation. And you just gotta start putting all the stuff back together. I've taken apart the Switch lights a couple times on this channel. So if you wanna check those disassembly and assembly, you can. There's also several write-ups online as well. Going through it piece by piece is uh, it's quite tedious, I will say, but take your time. Keep some patience and it should go back together relatively well. Yes, you may end up with like a screw or two left over, but as long as everything feels pretty good, you'll be okay. Here's the part I don't really like about this at all. Now, in order to fix the turquoise bezel that will be on the front right now, if you've put it all back together, they've provided this black screen protector. Seriously, they're covering it up. You might as well have just scribbled it with like a black Sharpie or something all the way around get the same effect, I guess. I, I'm i trying to think of a way that they could have uh, gone with this, and I really hope they figure something out. The only thing I can think of is that they actually provide us with a black digitizer, or if a black switch light comes out, that's all I can think of, because otherwise you're gonna be asking people who are just looking to reshell their switch light to start pulling the screen off of their digitizer. And that I don't think is gonna end that well. Yes, it's, again, it can take a beating and I did that here just for, for literally to show you that. I don't think I'm gonna recommend people to be doing it then. This is already hard enough because it is quite the process and it just feels strange, mostly because if you already had a screen protector that you really liked, say like a glass screen protector or something, this is gonna be a bit of a step down specifically to make it all work and, you know, look right. Or maybe you're someone who doesn't like screen protectors. Well, 
too bad, you're you're getting one. You also have a, a noticeable ridge around of it because this isn't exactly a thin screen protector. So unfortunately, you're gonna have a step up all the way around it. I don't know if that'll affect any cases out there. It doesn't affect my flip case. This still fits in there perfectly fine, but it's also not trying to clamp the front very, very hard. I've seen some clear, like clear plastic shells that clamp it really need like every like millimeter of space all the way around. I don't know if this is going to affect it because this is a fairly thick screen protector. The feel is pretty good as well. Like on the back, I was a little surprised. I thought it would be slippery just because it's very smooth, right? A smooth plastic. I thought it would end up being fairly slippery, kind of holding it. It's not. And that might be just the reaction of like kind of the moisture in your hands versus the plastic, but it grips better than the regular Switch Lite case. Yeah, it's instead of it being more of a matte plastic, it's kind of smooth, but grippy, I guess. That's the best term I can come up with. But that does lead me to something they should think about doing because the back has this large metal casing on the back. It doesn't really have anything to see here. I think they could put some sort of texture on either side where your fingers will rest. Think of like, uh, kind of like the, where you have a bunch of like dots on one part. Maybe they just do two rectangles up and down or something or a design. That would be better. And I think it would feel a little better as well. And it would kind of dress up the back that's, very bare. I understand they can't put a Switch logo here for copyright reasons, but just coming up with something extra to put back here, one, I think would feel better when you're playing and two would also look better. Also, if you can't tell yet, yes, it is a fingerprint magnet specifically on the back, of course, but even when you're putting it together, you might get it all together and then flip it over and realize those fingerprints are on the inside. Yes, that is something you have to deal with at times when reshelling a Switch Lite with a transparent case. So keep that in mind, wipe everything down before you put it together. I also wanna point out something really, really good that they did here. This case is very, very flush with the edges. And the reason for that is because they did go into detail when they made this casing. Inside of it are clips that fit together. It's the same design that the Switch Lite casing has, like the stock one. And yeah, that might be because they went and like copied it verbatim just about, and it, they're very, very close if they're not almost exact, but I do like that. That is a nice touch. When you screw it all together, it fits really, really well. And if you're not looking at it, it's actually hard to tell which end is where it splits between two pieces. And that just means it feels more quality and sturdy. It does not bend very easily. This feels like, I don't wanna say a first party case, but it doesn't feel like one of those junk third party casings you can buy. So I also went ahead and did reshell my other Switch Lite and I wanted to get another version of this shell because they had a few listed. I went with the smoked black edition one that they had advertised. And the reason I did that is because I had a gray Switch Lite and I figured the bezel would work really well with it, and it does. It looks great. Like the, the gray bezel versus having to slap this kind of this black screen protector on this one, it this one feels like it like it's so close. It feels like it came from Nintendo. Uh so it feels way more first party. Like if I had this out, like like just out in like a convention or something, people would probably have a hard time realizing that it's not like an addition that Nintendo released. The only giveaway, obviously, that there's nothing on the back, no Switch Lite, but if I got like a decal and slapped it on the back and dressed it up with like the serial number on the bottom, uh, it would be very difficult to tell. So I this is kind of a, a look towards what I would like to see. Like if we had a black Switch Lite where I could pull the bezel and digitizer from, and it gave a more flush look like this, I think we'd really have something here. And that's why right now I have to give the edge to the smoked black edition. I get it, the atomic purple is really cool. And you know what? If you don't mind kind of the uh, the bezel on the top here sticking up and I guess you get a screen protector out of it, there you go. You'll just have to make sure if you do scratch this that you get a, a screen protector that has a black border around it to continue matching it. But I like where we're going here. I like the atomic purple. I like the, uh, the smoked black edition. Um, very, very cool. Now, if you are comfortable reshelling a Joy-Con controller, you're probably able to do this. I think this is harder than the Joy-Con controller because you have a full system and screen involved. But if you're pretty confident doing Joy-Cons, you should be okay to do this, just take your time. But it's still hard for me to recommend that you go through the process to do this 
for a simple color change reshell like this. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Also, which one do you like more? Maybe the more uniform gray and smoked black uh, system switch light or the atomic purple, despite it having that screen protector sitting on it to, to make the bezel black. Let me know guys down below. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys next time.